No, we are. <laughs> Here we go. Don't do, don't do that. All right. Don't and that. we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning into a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have a magnificent guest with us tonight, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than Sister Safira. First of all, Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come um, let us know about your healing journey. Uh, yes. So a lot of a lot has been said and being made about healing online and uh, mental health. Uh, but before, while we go into that, while we get started, the first question that we have for you tonight is, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Great question. Um, well, I first heard the teachings actually through the minister. I was 17 in my college dorm and I was in, in the process of moving like my TV, my computer, everything up to the dorm, but I didn't get the TV up. So I'm on YouTube and I saw a video of the minister. And I was just at that point watching the minister's videos every day. And um, did not know, did not know about Islam at the time. I just know that this man was speaking the truth. Um, after that, I, I did start to attend a masjid. So that's when I started to learn more about Islam, but I did not put the two together. Um, once I, I transferred to school back home and I got a, um, a flyer for 10, 10, 15. So me and my girl, like, let's go. It's literally like 11 at night and she like, let's go. So we gas up the car and we ride out on like, we on monsters at this point, drinking monsters. We made it to DC. So we got to 10, 10, 15, enjoyed it. And then the, that February was Savior's Day. So she and I went to Savior's Day and the minister said, if you're in the city of Detroit, contact the local mosque, go to the mosque. So when I got back home, I inboxed the mosque and asked like, when were the meetings? And that's how it started. I went to my first meeting. And then a few weeks later, I started processing. Thank you so much. Check you out. Okay, yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Yes. And how did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teachers? Well, I think anyone in my life was, was, was really shocked. I've always been, I've always been pro-Black. I've just, all, I haven't changed. Like the teachings enhance my life. But like I said, I always loved my people. I always loved us. I was always pro-Black. So people, like my family wasn't shocked at all. I don't think anyone was shocked that I know. That I know. Mm. Okay, great. It's always good to have a, a phenomenal support system. Um, Sister Miriam says, peace, family, peace, uh, Mimi. Peace. And thank you everyone who's watching. We can't wait to put this on YouTube. All right. My next question for you is, so how did you get on a healing journey? Okay, so I'm trying to make this as concise as possible, but um, so I had um, I was pregnant with my my um youngest daughter, and um, I went in for like I had some genetic testing done, and the doctor told me that my pregnancy was incompatible with life. So at that moment, my heart just dropped. I'm like, what does that mean? Is it chromosomal? Chrom I can't say that word, but um. So the doctor was like, no, you, the pregnancy is just, it won't go to full term. You will have an, you know, it will abort the pregnancy. At that point, I was just so depressed. Um, a few weeks later, I decided to have a second opinion done in the amniostesis. And uh, the doctor said that it was a mistake with the genetic testing. So that I was just on a roller coaster. And then one day I went in for a, um, a scheduled um, ultrasound and my blood pressure was through the roof. At that point, they sent me to the hospital like right away. And I'm probably like 14 weeks until my delivery date. So I'm so scared because I'm like, I can't have a baby right now. The baby is not even a pound. Um, so just while in the hospital, um, I started to meditate. And I started to really get into prayer. And, um, you know, my daughter was 
um, she was in the hospital for two months and that was just a trying time for me. Like being, I had no control. Being someone that was so big on controlling things, at that point, I just had to give control to a lot. So um, that's when I started to really heal myself and really just go in. Okay, great. Yes, ma'am. Now, what advice, we're going to say right here, what advice would you give to other um, mothers who may dealing with, you know, um, babies who may become premature, having to leave the children in the um, NICU and things of that nature? That's right. I know NICU, right? To leave okay. Your children. <laughs> leave your children. Yes. Oh, my uh, goodness. <laughs> what advice would you give to? My, my advice is, um, to heal or just really be conscious of healing before you even have children. Mm. Having children is, you know, it's so trying, it's so much, you know, especially in this world that we live in, it's like opinions coming from left and right, and it can really be stressful on a mother. And also just be a good sister, be pleasant, because you don't have control over everything. And you just want to make sure that the people that you're in contact with, where, whether it's nurses, doctors, support staff, and this kind of goes into like schools too. You just want to be ple um, pleasant. You want to make sure that they understand that you are like that you care about your child. And when they see that you care about your child, they're going to care about your child as well. Mm, okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And thank you everyone who's watching all across the country. Can't wait to put this on YouTube. All right, my next, my next question for you is, ma'am, um, what has, that was a, no, let's stay right here with that, that moment. Okay. When, you, when you were in the hospital, you're meditating and you're praying, when did you feel like a release or when that you knew everything was going to be okay? Oh my goodness. Great question. So for the women who, who, who's been in similar situations, these doctors literally come around and say the same exact thing every single day. It's like, clockwork so that just was like <laughs> right before I knew they were coming around I really got into meditation because it was just like okay I don't want to keep hearing the same thing and it just really made me nervous but when they told they were giving me so much medicine and it was stop it stopped working and at that point they like you know we have to deliver this baby and I just at that point I was relieved because I just had faith. I knew my daughter was going to be fine. And like, I was relieved when they showed me my daughter, she was so tiny, but um, I was relieved when, when I saw her. Beautiful. Yes, ma'am. And how is your daughter now? Oh my goodness. She is awesome. Like she's three. She's, she's still kind of on the small side, but she's so healthy, so active no no issues so i'm so thankful beautiful yes ma'am and since mary says all praise due to a lot for sure yes ma'am all right let's go all right my next question for you is um your business so okay. what is your business and let's start with the name and then what it represents okay so so Mari moon um so my last my first name is sapphira my last name is omar so i just put that together okay it's almost like me rediscovering myself. Um, and that's kind of what my business is all about. It's all about rediscovering myself and helping other women on their journey of self-discovery. So some of the things that I offer is one-on-one -on -one coaching. I offer uh, workbooks and I'm just really building a community of women who are, are able to be vulnerable, who can network and be sisters. Mm, okay, yes, ma'am. So, you know, the sister's going to be loving all of that kind of stuff. So where can you, oh, yeah. how can they, how can they reach out to you? Oh yeah. So I'm on every social um, platform at Somar and Moon. And also my website is somarandmoon.com. I'm, I'm mostly on Instagram. So on Instagram, it's so much content and I'm just uploading more and more content, blogs, just um, talking about my healing journey and some of the things, some of the tools and some of the activities and rituals and things like that, that really, you know, help me and things that I still currently use. Phenomenal. I have a question. 
Okay. Are you leaving? Are you leaving the men out, or do we gotta just do it for watch our mothers, sisters, women, daughters, or, or is it something that men can we study some of these tools too? Or is it just women? I'm I'm gonna say that um, I only work with I only personally work with women. Okay. Okay. However, I I know that um, men can benefit from learning about you know about healing you know and um, just really being there for to give women space because healing is for is for we, as black being black in America healing is for the woman and the man and um you know I'm just not responsible for men you know I just personally but you know if you have a woman in your life you know just understand that we are we are very sensitive you know sometimes you know we are um Sometimes you might not understand why we're upset or, you know, we have hormones, we have cycles. So, you know, women need that space and time to be able to heal, especially women who have children. So, you know, for the brothers, like, just kind of try to understand because, you know, we love you, but sometimes it's just not about you. <laughs> okay. So give y'all space and time, get your personalities and everything in order. Okay, all right. And, it's, and it goes both ways because, you know, men have to do work on themselves. And, you know, being, um, you know, being in this society, you know, is very capitalistic. So, you know, women think that we got it going on because we might have, you know, better credit or ac better access into jobs and things like that. But, and, and we judge our man based off of, you know, their financial status, but we both need to heal. We all need to heal. So we need to learn grace on one another. Okay, check you out, learn about grace. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, Mimi, my, my sister said, Josh, don't say personalities. I'm saying, what do you want me to say? Like, you all have personalities. All right, so healing and grace. Okay, perfect. All right, have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how have you overcome that fear? Oh my goodness. So this is my first time being interviewed live. So that was a fear of mine. Like I was going through, <laughs> I was really going through it. Like I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to just cancel, but you know, I'm facing it. And when you, and when you are on a healing journey and you are like, and you're always on a healing journey, like don't, this is a healing journey for me just to even be on this show. But when you, when you just face those things and you just move it out the way, you just, you just ascending and you just keep ascending because I'm not going to let anything stop me from, you know, from putting my voice out there. You know, Allah wants my voice to be out there and he wants my perspective. Okay. Check you out. Yes, ma'am. This is uh, brother Nelson Ramos says, I'm some making beautiful people. Welcome to brother Nelson Thank Ramos. Holding it down. And thank you, everyone, who's our YouTube family who's been watching as well. All right. What has been the greatest trial in your life? And how have you overcome that trial? <laughs> I'm going to be honest, because that's the only way I know how to be. The biggest trial in my life was marriage. Mm. So I so I got married after knowing my husband like a month, like from meeting to getting okay. married. Okay, month, okay, okay. Right? That was the biggest trial for me, you know, and it is so crazy because I asked a lot for a husband and a lot was working. Like I had a husband like two months after I said that, <laughs> but I told a lot, I don't want to pay bills no more. Mm -hmm. And I literally, you know, manifested that situation, but I wasn't specific and more intentional. And I wish that, you know, what I know now, I, I'm definitely more intentional in, in everything that I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I got a question. So because a lot of people question me and Beyonce's um, love, for each other, you know what I'm saying? Things like that, you know what I'm saying? So just being intentional, be patient. I'm being patient with her. Okay. Also as being intentional with what you're saying, you're saying being intentional with what you asked for. Yeah. Okay, no problem, no problem. So if, you say, if you're saying that and you believe it, then you can have it. That's mm -hmm. the one thing about manifestation is what you believe. Absolutely. So it's, it's funny because you think it's funny. But if you, if you really wanted that, you can have it. Excellent. Okay. And Brother Nelson says, Massachusetts, 
New Jersey, loves you, brother Joshua. Thank you very much for everybody showing love. Okay, what about your greatest joy in life? My greatest joy in life is is being a mother. I, I I'm not. That's when I tell you I wake up to serve my children. I don't care if they. I have um three children. I don't care if they all want something different to eat. I'm like let's go you know my greatest joy is to see them grow and develop and just be just really like they're just so special to me they really like and I know everyone says their children are special because they are but um like my children they are like little healers like sometimes like people everywhere they just want to like buy my children stuff and love on them like and it's sometimes it's overwhelming but I have to like remind myself like I have to be able to receive and that's one of the feminine qualities being able to receive but the fact that my children like you know are so blessed and I know that's because you know I'm able to like be in a position to like really pour into them and really cater to them Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Well, you, you mentioned, you spoke of uh, femininity. Yeah. How important is femininity to women? Oh my goodness. Femininity is everything, you know. Um, we as women are like, especially as Black women, um, we're kind of like groomed to be in a masculine position because, um, you know, this is a situation, but we have to really fight that and just remain feminine. Um, because our role as 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 a as a mother is just that's a co-creator with the law, you know. So I take that so seriously, especially as I, you know, as I just go further into healing and as an NGT, you know, our units are so important. Um, a lot of people are going through mental you mentioned mental health mental health and things like that but like when you really go into our supreme wisdom and just the just the description of an mgt and the duties of an mgt it's like that that's healing in itself you don't even need to go past that <laughs> like if you if you feeling depressed go in the kitchen and i promise you you will feel better after that Mm -hmm. you know, go to the, take take your children to a park and play with them and actually talk to them like it's just it's so healing okay great and thank you everyone who's watching all around the world i wanted to speak to you about uh justice or else did you okay. make you made it i made it <laughs> and how and how was that um how did it impact you oh my goodness that experience was like that was the first time I was around that many black people in one place. So mm. I know that um, people speak on that um, being at the Million Man March. So I kind of like, I feel like I can feel, I felt that energy and it was just so like, it was overwhelming. Like I was just like in tears. I just, it just was like, it's a, an experience that I will never forget. Mm, mm. Wonderful. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And once again, the name, how can we contact you? The, the women around the world, the sisters, how can they contact you on your website and your social media? Okay. Again, um, I'm on Instagram mostly at Somari Moon. That's S-O-M-A-R-A-N-D-M-O-O-N. And also my website is somarimoon.com. Excellent. And you're saying that the men out there, uh, that we should promote your, your website and your business to all of our, the women in our lives who want to get healed, correct? <laughs> um, of course. I think that like, even, even when I like go around and give my business cards, I don't just give them to, to men. I mean, I don't just give them to women. I also give them to men because, you know, a man, you know, they have women in their lives. So, you know, I'm, I'm here for that. Spread the word. Spread the word. Okay. Now I wanted to ask you, uh, this is some, a question we asked for all uh, the guests. If, okay. What is your favorite album of all time? <laughs> yeah, you wasn't my ready favorite, for that one. Uh, my favorite go. album of all time is The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. Okay, okay. 
Yes, I can. I the just I can listen to that every single day. And I I remember being like 10 or 11, just really listening to that. Like really when she was singing to Zion, like I was just I know I was too young to be feeling those type those type of emotions, but I felt them. <laughs> okay, okay. You can't go wrong with the miseducation of Lauren Hill. That's that's probably top five um mentions that we get on the on the podcast. Really? Yeah, miss. Especially from the women, they're going to say miseducation on here. That's probably, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, all right, great. Uh, will you ever write a book about your healing? Oh, wow. I'm actually almost done writing my book. Okay. It's, it's titled um, Get Rich and Heal. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and what is Get Rich and Heal about? So, so this is just my perspective. Um, I think that a lot of times we get so wrapped up in healing and, you know, we don't really worry about like the finances, but our healing is supposed to make way for our businesses. And that's why, you know, um, Queen of Fool always talk about sacred work, finding your sacred work. So this is my sacred work and, um, mm-hmm. and business is a part of it. Um, the Quran says a lot loves beauty. So in order for like us to see the world, to, to eat the finest things and to, to just experience the finer things, you have to have money. And that's just a conversation that we have to address. A lot of us have blockages when it comes to money. Um, a lot of it stems in having low self-esteem, not really um, putting ourselves out there because we're all blessed with so many gifts. And we should be compensated for those gifts. So mm-hmm. a lot of my, you know, program is working with women to find things that that they really enjoy doing. Because you want to wake up every day and enjoy what you do. Because it's not work when you enjoy what you do. Okay, okay. So yeah, get rich and heal. Definitely like that. And I have a question. Yes. When, when you finish the book, Manifesting, Healing, Getting Rich, can we get the exclusive on the people's podcast? Definitely, most definitely. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Yes, ma'am. We have two more questions for you, and thank you all uh, for watching. Next, I want to know um, about your family. How important is your uh, not just your your husband and children, but your like you know your parents, your siblings, and how important is that feeling of family? Uh, how does that impact you? Your your village, your community, your tribe. Oh my goodness! So. When I was, um, like I said, when I was in the hospital, my fa- I was in the hospital away from my two children and they were small. Mm-hmm. The, fi- the feeling of like not having to worry about that was everything. Cause not too many people can go away for a month. And even afterwards, when my daughter was in the NICU for two months and really be just like at, at peace at knowing that my my village is they got my back, you know. Excellent, and um, that's powerful. Yes, ma'am. And I know so many uh, sisters and women um, who who experienced that. And I'm glad that you were able to heal. And a lot blessed your uh, your daughter to be here and be thriving. So shout out to you. Thank you a lot. And I wanted to say. Um, the healing is so important because like when you when your cup cup is empty it's hard for you to give to someone else you know so it's so important to heal because like we have family that we have to look out for you know and our sisters and and when you when you are on when you're healing you can, you could you just pick up you just and when you meditating and praying you just pick up on things subtle things and and you're able to, to you know really be there for one another powerful okay so one thing that we that I've been addressing with the guests but also social media I've been seeing a lot of people talk about it as well women intuition is this a real thing or is this a myth it's definitely a real thing and um intuition and being intuitive that's that's our gift like that's our gift from god that's our god-given gift and the more that we 
the more that we pray, the more that we meditate, the more that we indulge in self-care, you know, the stronger that ability is. So that's a, it's almost like a muscle that you have to build. And when I tell you that intuition has gotten me through life, I, through life, even as a little girl, and it was higher when I was a little girl, like, you know, when people say children are closest to God, that's really true because when you're a child, you don't have limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And as you go through adulthood, the more limiting beliefs you have, the more disconnected you become to source. That's why when a child says they want something, it might seem like we can't afford it or whatever, but it's going to happen for them. So as mothers, it's so important to like be, be healing and be childlike and not crush, you know, the imagination of children. Cause that, that imagination, that's God energy. And mm -hmm. we have to tap into that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So listen, I, I love to hear um, positivity and affirmations and things of this nature. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I'm glad that you're talking about God energy, children, and all that powerful stuff. All right. One more one more time, Sister Fire, for everybody who was watching or who may uh, come in late. How can we um, go to your website and your Instagram? Okay. So you can um, check out my website at somarandmoon.com. That's S-O-M-A-R-A-N-D-M-O-O-N. And I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok at Somar and Moon. Excellent. All praise due to a lot. On behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Shout out to your business, your, uh, your husband, your children, and the entire village. We look forward to reading your book, uh, Get Rich and Heal, and um, bringing you back on for part two. Yes, sir. And I would like to say um, I'm so honored to be on this show. Um, this work, you know, we talk about healing but everything is healing. So this work that you do um, is the work of a healer. You know, when I discovered um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on YouTube, so you mm. being on YouTube and even me on this, this show, it's so, it's so humbling because, you know, that's, that's somebody is at, on their computer and they're discovering the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad through the work that you do. So thank you so much. Thank you. So, so you're familiar with the People's Podcast. I didn't know you were familiar with it. You I am. Okay. I, am. My, I watch the People's Podcast all the time. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That means a lot to me and everybody who's watching. Yes. This, this is Joshua Little Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Alaikum salam. Thank you all for everybody who's watching. Can't wait to put this on YouTube.